So how do you become the most well-known builder or contractor in your geographical area? Today I want to discuss what it takes to be the best known new home builder or contractor in your geographical area. So that when people Google the service that you offer, you appear. You appear on TikTok even. You appear on Google Ads. You appear on Facebook. When someone moves into your market, you somewhat in a magical way appear. I'm gonna break down the content that you need to create and how to create it, and I'm gonna show examples. I'm gonna show examples of landing pages, I'm gonna show example of ads, and I'm gonna show you how to set everything up via the traffic sources that I mainly use with new construction companies and contractors all around the world. Now I've been developing this strategy for around the past 14 to 15 years, and it's going to be a, a, about a three to four part series. So if you want to learn this strategy inside and out, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and press the like on the video as well because it does help me with the YouTube algorithm and it just makes me feel nice. So I would appreciate that too. So let's jump over to my computer and we'll have a look at part one of how to become the best known contractor on your home builder in your geographical area. Okay, so here we are at my computer. Hopefully you've smashed that subscribe button and the like button. The summary of today's video is how you're going to become the best known builder or contractor in your area. What do you offer people when they have just started to consider a new home or your contracting service? What's the first piece of content? How do you get in touch with the people just starting the research phase or their journey? Next, what are the best ways to target these people? So not only am I going to show you the content that you need to create, but I'm also going to show you how to do the targeting click by click even. So I'm going to show you ad examples, I'm going to show you content examples, so that you get a really uh, in-depth and nuanced perspective on how to become the best known home builder or contractor. I'm also going to go through the psychology, so you know the why behind everything. This is probably going to be a three-part series, it may be four, it may be even five, so I could be telling a little white lie here, but it's one reason to subscribe to the channel. So let's just jump straight into the, to the overall strategy. So I just wanna rip through some of the theory. If you don't understand this theory, it's gonna make it very difficult on how to structure your traffic, how to structure your content, and how to use each platform. So bear with me for just a minute or two. So the top of the funnel is people in the research phase, they've just started their journey into a new home or into the contracting you know, space that you serve. So. Prospects have indicated initial interest and are starting their buyer's journey. This is where people are wondering about the cost, new trends, you know, the top level stuff that go into the services that you offer. When people move into the middle of funnel or sometimes MOF or MOFU, it's prospects have now become uh, a little bit more educated, but they've, de they've demonstrated an interest now. So like there are behavioral cues, either with like the targeting selection at the traffic level or at the behavioral kind of cues at the uh, retargeting level that this person is interested in what you have to offer. So remember that words are cheap and, be, and you should be basing things on people's behavior. So what I mean by just a quick overview of behavior, so if someone spends 45 seconds or longer on a, on a landing page, it's probably a strong indicator that they're somewhat interested in your service. If someone watches 75% of your video or more, it's a probably a strong indicator that they're interested in your service at some level. So therefore you can take this person, this is speaking at the top of the funnel or the middle of the funnel view, you can take that person on a sequential kind of like dating process. So you can say, now that you know this, this is the next thing that you wanna know, this is the next thing that you wanna know, this is the next thing that you wanna know. So you can move people through this sequence of communication that builds them into a stronger lead, a warmer lead, uh, an easy to convert lead, and most likely an, uh, a lead that will spend more money as well. When we get into the bottom of funnel, sometimes the BOF or BOFU, it's now that the prospect has a lot of the research done, they've got a lot of the education and, and the knowledge that they need to know to make a decision already synthesized and processed. They're ready to make a decision. So they're contacting your competitors, hopefully they're contacting you, and they're pretty well educated. So what I'm gonna do in this strategy, I'm gonna show you in this video specifically how to grab the top of the funnel people. This is the biggest audience. It's where a lot of people don't really target. They don't know how to capture those people. They don't know how to nurture those people. 
I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to show you really uh, good examples, well, in my opinion, good examples uh, of how to do this as well. So for me, the top of funnel content or slash offers uh, that I use with my clients are either content via video or blog content. I prefer video a little bit better. I think it builds a better rapport with the person who's watching you as a, as a new home builder or contractor, which allows you uh, to have a, a bit of a more of an emotional connection. But as I mentioned, it builds that rapport. It makes the lead a little bit warmer and a little bit more receptive to you. They have a little bit more trust with you as well. So there's, a, there's many flow on effects to that. There's also some other things that you can do with video that you can kind of do with blog content. And we'll get into those as we get through this series. So the next thing is quizzes and calculators. Now, I've just made a video uh, about quizzes and calculators. I'll reference it in this video here. There's also a link in the description below about it. And it, it's just about how can I create a calculator or a quiz? And I'll use just a, a calculator in this example, but in, and in the video that I've referenced, I use a, a kitchen calculator. So one of the most pressing kind of questions when people first start the journey in relation to kitchens or even a new home is, how much is it going to cost? Well, this calculator that I built for uh, and subtly changed for, for kitchen clients allows people to price their kitchen. So to give them an approximate cost. In order to get that cost, they're gonna give me their email address or my client the email address. That allows me to now control the communication. I get to control it via email. So I get to send them an indoctrination uh, um, email sequence which allows them to uh, learn more about this industry, but also position myself or position my client in a frame that they want to be positioned in. So if someone is responsive to it, they're much more likely to kind of like fall into the bucket or the, the, the qualification bucket and become a, a, a much warmer, much hotter lead for that, uh, for that client. It also allows you to gather some you know, information to make the selling process a little bit better. Next, we have premium content for email opt-ins. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples around this, but it's typically like, you know, what, what are the, what, in terms of like uh, new home builds, it's what are the most expensive uh, new home builds in the last 12 months? What does it cost to build your new home? How do you get started building a new home? What's the process? And there's many different other types of content uh, just like this, you're essentially answering the most top of funnel questions, the most common top of funnel questions, I should say. And it's important to remember that you want content that grabs the attention and that will resonate with people who are interested in building their own home or the contracting service in which you have. There has to be some form of pre-qualification. So if you start talking about, say, mortgages, um, if you're in the new home space, there's some relevancy there, but you could be getting refinanced people. So there's somewhat of a pre-qualification element, but perhaps you want something a little bit more stronger than something about mortgages. So now what I wanna do is start the process of showing you examples of content, but I also wanna show you examples of the ads, and I wanna show you examples of the landing page as well. So first up, we have this free home design guide. This is the Facebook ad. We see that it's pretty clear cut. It, it gives a little bit of an indicator of what you might get in, in terms of the visual. Uh, you'd be able to read it. So it's probably like a PDF kind of download kind of thing. So we're getting that kind of sense. It's calling out the audience. So looking to renovate, extend, build a custom home in 2022. So again, that's a that pre-qualification element that I mentioned. Download a free design guide today for a professional design in, uh, for professional design inspiration and price expectations. Price is always something at the top of the funnel that's really at the forefront of people's minds. And then we move into South Australia, the most professional small home builder of the year. The one thing that we don't see is any element that if they are the, um, uh, the most professional small home builder of the year uh, or small builder of the year, we don't see any reference of that in the ad. So how do we know that that is true? So if they had like the logo of that in the ad, they would definitely do uh, far better because it would uh, substantiate that claim. I would even move uh, that sentence into its own separate paragraph so it becomes uh, loosely encapsulated with white space. So it's emphasized a little bit more, but I would only do that if it's referenced in the visual uh, aspect of this ad. So this is the landing page for that said offer. So we have looking to renovate again, we're just rehashing 
what was mentioned as the ad text within the Facebook ad. And that's really important because it builds congruency. It immediately tells the person that, you, hey, you're at the right spot. You click this because you wanted, you wanted this and we're offering that now. And it's very clear cut. It's pretty much the exact same verbiage from memory. So in our design, again, we're now we're just setting up the benefits uh, that the person will get. We've got like a visual representation. I don't think it's the best visual representation. It's much more of a title. It would be much better to give uh, the uh, the inner workings of the of the of the of the guide as opposed to just the, like the visual representation of the cover. We're just quickly just getting first name and email address. Then they're moving into our sequences. This is the visual elements that I'm referencing. So. The HIA here in Australia is you know, one of the associations that gives out awards and they were the winner of the best renovated bathroom. It looks like up to 35,000, 2021. They won stuff in 2020 as well. And it's important that that should be referenced in the ad as well. So next we have a different kind of offer a little bit. So this one's seven things you must know before designing a new home. So the last one was a design guide. This one's a bit more uh, fear orientated. So it's about, indirectly about mistakes that you could make. So again, we're calling out the, uh, the audience, do you want to build or renovate, etc. Find the right builder. It, it's like an endless maze, right? Everyone's got horror building stories. Everyone's got horror contracting stories. Again, if you're a contractor, this works perfectly well for you. You know, the seven big mistakes window, uh, um, uh, the seven big scams that window contractors you, uh, pull on people kind of thing. That kind of thing can work perfectly well. It goes to bathrooms, kitchens, landscaping, flooring, it doesn't matter. Uh, solar, it, 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 the guide is, the, the style of guide is endless in its ability to uh, reach an audience because people who are in the market do not want to make mistakes. They do not want to get ripped off. That's why there's a pre-qualification element uh, built into this uh, theme offering. Next, we move into some kind of like fascinations. So fascinations are, trying to build curiosity and trying to build desire about consuming the guide to find the right contractor type or contract type for you that might be a little bit of a typo there but you know keep keep track of the finances contracts probably right um i'm just uh losing my track of thought as i'm on camera here but uh, keep track of finances when building keep the perf uh, keep uh, get the perfect uh land title prevent cost blowouts avoid getting caught Short with insurance, spot dodgy builders. I would start with spot uh, spot dodgy builders. Dodgy might be an Australian phrasing. It just means like a uh, someone who's a snake oil salesman, a, a scam artist. So it's a, I would start with that. I think that's where people have the biggest fear and that's generally where I start. Then they have the visual representation of the ad creative. So free expert guide, seven things you must know before designing a new home. We have the physical representation. Like it's a bit more of a physical book this time. And I think that this one is, is a pretty decent uh, visual as opposed to the last one. It kind of just looked like the cover was just a singular image. I think this one has a little bit more impact because the physical book will give the perception that is a little bit more valuable as opposed to just a, a standard um, kind of like flat image, so to speak. Then we've got into here, the avoid the mistakes most people make when building or renovating their home. Again, we're, we're pressing upon the fear. The landing page, again, just reiterates everything that we see just here. So straight away, the landing page, get our, mista get our mistakes to avoid when building your new home. Again, rehashing, setting the expectation, being very clear with what the person's going to get. We see a subheadline here, building your dream home with qualified builders, etc., etc. It, it's important to get this right. It sets you up for life. The free guide below uh, essentially will help you achieve you know, your desired end outcome. Then we see the visual representation again, which I think is important because we've seen that as a strong reference point in the visual. And then we see a very uh, brief form, but we do see the added uh, field of cell phone slash mobile in, in this form. Now, Mobile and cell phones, if you have a great CRM and you know how to do the follow-up, I think it's very valuable to gather this information. It can lower the, uh, the perceived, or well not the perceived, the actual conversion rate that you get from, uh, from people filling in this form. So generally, if you want high, high fill-out uh, or high completion or high conversion rate, just have first name and email. 
If you have a good CRM and you're willing to build out uh, an SMS sequence, I think have it in there. I would reference that uh, here in brackets, we will send you a copy to your phone. It gives the reason why to fill out the mobile phone uh, and uh, adding that or adding that little thing, in, uh, that little piece of text in brackets, just at the end of this area here, has increased our conversion rate. It's like, oh, I see why you want my mobile phone number. Really, we want it just to uh, have a more personalized communication uh, mechanism with the prospect. So again, this content is top of funnel. Stop wondering what you need to know about the building or renovation process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, it's like you have all these questions. Our guide has all the answers. This is real top of funnel stuff. It's it's filling up the top of that funnel, and as we get down into this three to five part series, you'll understand that we're, we're funneling in, and then we're like pre qualifying, we're nurturing, we're educating, we're warming these people up until they pop out the bottom into really hot, warm leads for your uh, construction or contracting business. Now, as we move down, we see some credibility builders. So. APB member, it's a, a, a association that of builders that help them with their marketing and sales. Interesting kind of content, if like just a shameless plug for them, I'm, I've never spoken to them. Uh, they are Australian based, but they work with builders all, all around the world. You've got the Master Builders Association and just a couple of other associations that just help uh, you know, substantiate that these guys are decent. Now, the guarantees around fi fixed price contract, I think they're getting into the selling a little bit too much here of the service. I don't think that is warranted at this uh, this time, but uh, they do that. So you know, communication fixed price. Essentially, this is, this page is all about selling the ebook. It's not about selling your service. So I would remove all of this stuff. This you could keep a little bit. I would include it into the guide because the guide now that they have it is a selling mechanism. This whole page is completely geared to just getting the person to fill out this form. Everything else, if it's not helping support this, is redundant. So the next one is very similar. The five keys to success on your custom home journey. Really professional designed book. It actually looks like a physical book this time. Again, the last one was like a bit more of a 3D render. It looked a little bit cheesy uh, in some way. They've also tried to make this look like a little bit of a native ad, I think. It kind of looks like how news programs have got that bottom headline. So reveal, custom home builder shares his secrets on how to ensure success on your custom home journey. It's a little bit native in style. And I think that goes away to helping improve conversion rate. Again, this is just all about the same, uh, you know, being success, being successful in your custom home, avoid mistakes, etc., etc. This is like the insider's secrets uh, or the inside secrets. So it, it's uh, very much a, a stereotype, maybe not a stereotype, but a very much a common copywriting theme that very good copywriters use because we have this natural affinity as humans to want to know the inside scoop, the secrets, the behind the scenes you know, look. And uh, I, I think that that's a, an important psychological element that people uh, underestimate because when you're in the industry, it's all the same kind of stuff. It's the same you know, stuff every day. You know it inside and out. But to someone who doesn't live and breathe it, this is all gold and really interesting because they're in the market. They have a very strong why and desire to want the information and they do not know it. The landing page here is really nicely done. It's, uh, it's really nicely designed. There's great visual elements. Uh, and let's just go through it really quickly. So again, personalization, attention, home builders of Brisbane. So it's a city here in Australia in the state of Queensland. Free report reveals five, uh, the, key, the five keys to successful, uh, a successful custom home journey. Uh, you know, again, thinking about renovating your home, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Watch our 10 part video series, which explains every step. This one is so much better, right? So in terms of the visual and also the offering, I think they should also be showing uh, uh, the video component as well. They've, got, they've done a very good job of the visual component. So gaining, uh, excuse me, gaining clarity on your home design, understanding the construction process, etc. Giving really good content, it's well laid out, looks really professional. But I would also have a, a, a reference, a visual reference of the, the video process or the, the video 
uh, content that you have. These guys, as I mentioned in the previous landing page, these guys aren't doing the same mistakes. I want you to see the value in this. I've substantiated both visually and textually. Give me your details. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not trying to distract you. Just give me your details, you will get it. And once again, we see the three form fields that we've spoken about already. So this one here is a video ad and I've got my headphones on because I'm gonna play and we're gonna watch the video. It's only 30 seconds. It's really good. It illustrates to uh, my clients just how easy it is to make a video. This guy is literally just behind a wall. He's got a light next to him. He's just got a, a general t-shirt on. Uh, there's nothing special. The lighting isn't anything special. He literally could just have his phone propped up on something. It's, it's, uh, it, it's just pointing at him. He may have a lapel microphone. He might be just using the microphone. That's, that's part of the phone. And it's, it's, it's literally this simple. Want to know what it costs to build a new home? I'm Austin Miller with Wise Built Custom Homes. The most common question I get is how much does it cost per square foot to build a new home? So we developed a cost per square foot calculator. Click on the link below, select the type of home you want to build and fill out the quiz. Using a formula based off our job cost history, at the end of the quiz, you will receive a ballpark cost per square foot to build your home. So whether you're thinking about building this year, next year, or five years from now, take the quiz, spend a few minutes, and find out what it's gonna to cost to build your custom home. So there we have a really simple video. The, the gentleman is just speaking. There's no real visual elements. There's one at the end where we see the wise build logo. He, he, he illustrates what you're going to get. So it's going to be a square foot calculator. It's using their formula. So it's got a clear and identified mechanism. So it's the formula that they use. Uh, and it, it substantiates the claim that if you fill out the quiz, this is going to be somewhat accurate. So then he moves on to speaking about like, no matter whether you're looking to build soon, uh, in the near future or in the long future, I would suspect that these guys are dropping out a weekly, bi-weekly or and or monthly email, right? So they will be able to nurture these people into becoming a lead for them when the person is right because there's a lot of things, there's a lot of ducks to get in a row when an individual wants to build a new home from financing, uh, you know, location selection, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is a really simple video ad Anyone can make it. Literally just like, I've got my phone just here. Grab your phone, shoot it, and you're done. The landing page, unfortunately, is not as good as the video. It's still pretty good, but the video is, I think, really excellent uh, in terms of communication. Uh, the visual element is perfectly fine. No one is expecting a, a builder to have high production. The landing page, I think, is a little bit complicated, but what we see here is three different... Um, home selection types, which is perfectly fine. And what we see here is that when you start the quiz, it drops down and you've got a series of questions. It is a moderately long quiz. It, it would legitimately probably take two to three minutes to fill out. And I think that is somewhat a little bit detrimental to getting people to the end of the quiz, but I think it is hugely beneficial into the pre-qualification uh, pre element. I think you'll get substantially better leads from doing that. I think that there's an overcomplication um, with here. I think that this is just getting into the process just a little bit too much unnecessarily. So I think that people could be lost here and I think that it is detrimental to the process. Bring this up in a, in a further email communication. So maybe in the, the second, third or fourth email, talk about the process, break it down individually so you can build out uh, however many steps this is, it could be approximately a dozen. Each step could be its own email, for instance. Moving up through here, I would just plug the person into a bucket. So take the quiz, move them onto a page that is just specifically about that, uh, that quiz. The only detrimental element to what I've just suggested is um, if someone wants to quote each of these, it just becomes a little bit cumbersome. The person has to go back. So this one has a slight benefit of it, you can take each of the quizzes uh, in a row kind of thing. So very well done kind of funnel here and something that uh, I'm doing for my clients and it works fantastically well. So now I want to jump to Facebook and Google traffic. So there's two forms of Google traffic that I like to, to, to primarily play with. So the first one is traditional Google search. Now I've got a Google search 
uh, video already made. So what you can do is just jump down and I'll reference it in the video here. Uh, it'll pop up in a corner hopefully. If not, it's in the, the description below, the YouTube video description, and it will go through approximately, I think it's about 50 minutes, and it will go through step-by-step step on how to create a very good Google search campaign. Google search campaigns can work fantastically well in terms of uh, getting that top of funnel, but it also uh, will, will attract people in also the middle of funnel and bottom of funnel. Now, what I wanna to speak to you about is YouTube. Now, people might be saying, oh crap, like YouTube, because I have to create a video. But as we just seen, videos aren't that uh, difficult to create. And I'll show some examples of some videos, and I have done uh, in, in my past videos if you, if you wanna have a deeper dive. But YouTube is fantastic because you get a very low cost per click. The targeting is unmatched on any platform. Like, it is ridiculous some of the targeting options that you have in order to target the right people. YouTube, if you know what you're doing, it's literally like just shooting fish in a barrel. It is crazy. So what I want to do is talk about the targeting. So what I'll do is I'll start a brand new Facebook, uh, sorry, a brand new YouTube campaign and you and I can walk through it together. So when you start your new campaign, you want to create a campaign without goals and guidance. And we want to go with a video campaign because this is definitely going to be uh, YouTube orientated. We want to go with, um, it's a little bit difficult this one because there, there are different things that you can do here. We're going to, in this tutorial, I'm just going to go through a custom video campaign, but the ad sequence, uh, if you shoot a number of videos, you can literally take someone on the dating process. So if someone watches this video, they watch that video, then they watch this video, then they watch that video. You can literally control that process of communication with someone on the YouTube platform. But pot potentially I can get deeper into that in another video another day. So moving forward, custom video campaign. So I'm gonna skip through budgets and move to uh, both networks and locations. So with here, we've got the video partners uh, on the display network. We've also got YouTube results, uh, search results and YouTube videos. The video partners on the display network, I like to leave unchecked temporarily um, just at the start of this, of, of this campaign. I just wanna show up on here. That way I can measure them uh, much more specifically and it's just a, it's a cleaner process. Moving through to location targeting. So Google has added some by default, and what you can do here is really target down to ultra-specific locations. So if you wanted to target, say, uh, Miami, you can target you know Miami, Florida, et cetera, et cetera, and we can target that area. We can also target uh, different uh, zip codes, we can target regions, we can target states, and we can target nations. We can also, so if we say like Fort uh, Lauderdale, we can exclude Fort Lauderdale. So if we just zoom out a little bit, we can get very specific. So we can include and exclude down to the zip code even. We also add like radius targeting as, as well here. So if you put in your address uh, or, or a place, uh, we can create a, a, a five mile, five kilometer, or you know, 20 mile, 20 kilometer, and we can, we can get this pretty large. So it just goes to show you that you can be very specific in your location targeting, and you can also target areas that are more affluent by zip code if that's your preference. Next, locations, or uh, sorry, languages. It's very important, I think, to have English here. So because this will allow you, as one strategy, you can target expats. So expats that are potentially moving back to build or uh, they're currently overseas, you want to be able to target those people. Language is one way to segment those people out. Next with demographics, you can be really like narrow and specific here. So like if you're at the higher end of, of contracting your new home building, potentially you might only want to start with just targeting females. If that's the case, leave unknown in because unknown makes up a large portion but leave the, fem leave the female one selected. Potentially, uh, I like to do this with some of my top of final campaigns because I know women are going to make the, like, that kind of like top level decision at the top of the funnel. And then as they start the process, it becomes very much a joint decision making process. But by and large, it it's definitely a good idea depending upon like what you're starting to leave everything checked and then segment down once you start getting data in. That is the best, uh, uh, rule around process. Now, as you get through to age, you may want to deselect 18 to 24. They've got no money yet. You know, they're just starting their career. It's obvious. Parental status, 
most people around new homes are going to be parents. Depending upon the style of homes that you like to build, if you're a custom home builder, for example, if your marketing and communication is around building you know, the dream family home, you want parents, right? It's really obvious. Then moving through to household incomes, again, really obvious. You might want to you know, deselect the lower 50% because you want to work with higher end. You can do this with YouTube. You can't do it with Facebook anymore. So one of the really cool things with YouTube and the display network is that you get to target people based upon their affinity, interests, habits, uh, in market events. So it's super cool. And then you've got this really powerful one uh, just here around custom audience segments. I'm gonna get into that one in just a moment. The first couple around here are that, that are really important are the in market and affinity, affinity audiences. So if you move back to the search function, type in remodel if you're a contractor, you'll see a bunch of life events moving soon, et cetera, et cetera, in market, they're in the market for home renovations, and you can just start to play around with this search function in order to find uh, audiences that are really specific to you. The important rule here is one audience per ad group, right? Because we want to understand how that audience per performs with our ad creative. And then if we move into home builder, we can see home builders, we can see home building information, custom home builders, home builder websites, etc. This is where we're getting much more narrow. And this is where Google is saying that they're in the market, right? So their prior behavior based upon how they're browsing on Google platforms and on websites where they've got uh, Google Analytics installed, which is a huge majority of websites, they're starting to build a profile of the person's behavior, right? So they know whether someone's in the market or out of the market for something. So here we've moved into browse and we've moved into uh, how people have interacted uh, with your business. Here we get to create a couple of, this is your retargeting stuff. This is where you can create audiences based upon what pages they viewed. So if, if, if people viewed a, a specific home or a specific service, hypothetically that you're a contractor, you offer kitchens and bathrooms, you do not want to be showing a kitchen ad in your retargeting to a bathroom person and vice versa. With new homes, we saw that the, the, the gentleman that had the, uh, square a square foot um, calculator he had different styles of homes if the person has looked at a single story home show them a single story ad a double story a double story ad so on and so forth so we can nurture that uh, that behavioral kind of information that we have we can nurture it to our benefit where we're putting stuff that, that that we know that they like in front of them the next thing that we can do if you've got youtube ads running or if you have a youtube channel we can we can target users, so we can we can target people who have viewed in the past 180 days, past 10 days, past two days, past five days. We can also target subscribers. Now, what I like to do is I like to target people that have watched a YouTube ad or YouTube video in the past two to five days, and I think that is a really good um, uh, uh, audience to retarget to because there's recency there. They've, they've looked at you recent, recently, you're top of mind. Subscribers to your channel, you can target for a wider window and it will do really well. So next one I wanna to talk to you about is placements. So placements are really cool because you can target specific videos and you can target channels. So this is where you can target competitors, like you can literally steal your competitors traffic here. You can also target uh, channels and videos that are talking to people that you know that will be in your market due to the theme. So if, if someone created a video about a, a custom custom home mortgages, that is a very good video for you. People talking about interior design for new homes, uh, architectural stuff, there's a plethora of different types of content that you can target within the YouTube network that will allow you to get in front of the people that you need to get in front of. Coupled with that, you can add the, the demographic data, so ages, incomes, and then obviously the geography. You're starting to really narrow down on people uh, who are going to be hyper-responsive to what you offer. If you're going to target specific videos, I definitely recommend having a list of um, 300 plus videos. And a service that can do that really quickly for you is TubeSift. I'm not associated with them. It's uh, kind of like a plug, but not a plug. Uh, I don't get any commission or anything. I, I use them and that's about it. 
uh, that they'll make it really, really easy. Now, keywords are a really good audience as well. It's a little bit broader in scope because it's using the video title and the metadata from the video in order to uh, see what videos are relevant to the keywords that you've put in. Now, the rough rule of thumb here is three to five keywords per ad group. Keep them very tightly themed. So if you're talking about like luxury homes, keep them all luxury home, that, that three to five keywords about luxury homes. If you're talking about custom homes, do not put custom home keywords in luxury kind of thing. If you're talking about you know cheap homes, you know keep them all separated so you can evaluate the performance of that theme independently from you know other uh, uh, other influences. So I want to talk about custom segments. So just whipping back up, pressing custom segments. Now this is where you can get some really cool uh, insights, uh, some really cool uh, targeting options that is just unrivaled. Right. So the first thing that we can do is that people who search for any of the terms on Google. So what a great tactic here is to go to your Google search term report within your Google ads, rip the search term report, find all of the words that have provided um, uh, conversions and put them in here. That way you'll be able to find all the people that are making those searches on the Google search engine and target ads to them on the YouTube network. We've got a great behavioral cue here. The person has gone to the Google search engine. They've imported, they've inputted a keyword that's hyper relevant to you. It's commercially uh, provided results in the past. Now you can follow those people or target those people, I should say, on the YouTube platform. Works fantastically well. So this option here allows you to target competitors or websites that you know that people will be interested in. So this is another way we can steal the, the, the traffic that uh, your competitors are paying for or putting in effort to gain. You know that it's gonna be uh, hyper relevant because the person uh, in terms of the company are trying to target people that you're trying to target. If the person uh, is, a, is doing really well with organic traffic, so your competitor's doing really well with organic traffic, you can leverage that. They're doing all the hard work and you're paying pennies on the dollar in order to get that traffic back to you. But it also allows you to target different types of organizations, associations, and blogs that will uh, that that currently host the visitors that you want to get in front of. Again, you can layer it with the geographic demographic kind of data to make sure that you, you know, you're not targeting you know potentially the entire United States, but you're only targeting that you know Miami kind of uh, portion where you you know offer your services. So jumping over to Facebook now, Facebook has some great targeting options. So some of the things that you can do with YouTube, you can't do with Facebook, unfortunately. And some of the things that you can do with Facebook, you can't really do with YouTube. There's a whole, a whole host of other different targeting options that you can do with YouTube, potentially a video for another day to really get stuck into the weeds of YouTube. But hopefully I've layered some really good information on you that you can use and that is actionable and that you can just get started right now. With Facebook though, so some of the great targeting options what you want to do is just come to audiences. This is where you can really build the audiences uh, much better in some capacity. So what we want to do now is create some of the more powerful Facebook audiences. So the first thing that we have to do is create a custom audience. Now what the custom audience does is uses your customer data. So here what I would do is use your lead information that you received for the last couple of years, say two to three years. So you want first name, last name, email address, and cell phone number. You give that to Facebook, they analyze the demographic psychographics of those people, and they find all the people that are just like those people in your geographical area and allows you to show them ads once you build a lookalike audience, right? So what we're gonna do first off with that lead information is create the, the, the custom customer list. So you just go through this process here and you can import from MailChimp, download a file template, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can also copy and paste. Do, do you have values? We'll say no. And here you can just copy and paste that information uh, and, and name the audience. So this would be say uh, leads from 2019 to 2022, right? If you've got enough closed deals, so like 400 plus closed deals of an individual service, right? So if you offer kitchens, bathrooms, uh, decks and stuff like that, you need to isolate them. So kitchen, all your kiss, uh, kitchen leads into one list or your uh, bathroom in another list, et cetera, et cetera. So you'd have a, uh, a custom list for kitchens, a custom list for bathrooms, so on and so forth. So once you name that uh, and create and name that list, 
uh, you're all done. Then we want to create a lookalike audience. A lookalike audience, uh, you, what you'll find here is that it'll be, you'll be able to select the audience uh, in this tab here. And uh, I've just had to blur it out. Um, there's some sensitive information there, but uh, there's, um, uh, yeah, you'll be able to select the custom uh, list that you just made. It will expand it. So that's, as I've mentioned, analyze the demographics, psychographics, behaviors of the people, and they'll find them for you in your geographical area. Super powerful targeting. The rough rule of thumb here is it used to be 1% audiences used to work really well. So you test 1% and then create a 2%. So, you know, you would do, you know, each audience uh, one by one. I found that that doesn't work as well nowadays. Uh, what I'm doing uh, more so now is, is I'm creating a, an audience that is a little bit more like this. So I might just go from here to here. So like uh, every time we move up a percentage point, it gets a little less accurate. So I'm creating a one to 3%. So it gives me a large uh, audience, but then I'm going really large with the, uh, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 uh, targeting. Then what you do is you just select the audience location. So you can select regions or countries. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then you're done and dusted. These are the audiences that I most use is the lookalike ones. There are some interests, but generally speaking, I'm pushing pretty hard now with lookalike audiences. There are interests. It's the same rule of thumb with the with with like YouTube search for interests. There's one about home improvement. Uh, there's things about construction. It, it's really just testing the audiences. I know this video has got really long. It's been very thorough. It's been very in depth. I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, putting it together for you. So as a free gift for watching the video, because it is incredibly long, in the link in the description below, there's a link to this page where you can interact with me at any level that you want. It's completely free. There's no obligation. Uh, I will do a free audit of your marketing for you. I'll go through a, a strategy, the Google ads, Facebook ads, conversion rate optimization, and more for you. It's completely free. I typically turn them around in 48 hours if things are going pretty smoothly. Uh, and you and I can have a conversation. Again, there's no sleazy kind of snake oil sales process here. It's literally just, you know, I just want to have a good conversation. Honest, like if I could just get paid to like speak to people about business and stuff like that, it'd be the greatest job on earth. That's why I offer this. It's something that I really do enjoy doing uh, and it's completely free. So there's a link in the description below. Uh, I'd love to have a chat to you if you're interested. Again, just like to rehash, there's no sales um, you know, talk of any nature. If you want to talk about working together, I'll let you bring that up. Otherwise, it's purely just value exchange. I want to hear what you have to know and your philosophies and ideas about business. And hopefully you might want to hear from me as well. So I put that offer out to you. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button because there's another three to four parts to this video series. And I think that uh, if you've watched this long, you would... Um, definitely find value in the next couple of parts. So with that being said, crush the day and I'll see you in the next video.